Hey guys, and welcome back to Dark Matter Podcast. I'm Dominique. And I'm Avalon. And today we want to take a break from the more heavier topics that we've covered recently and discuss something that we can all hopefully get a good laugh from. Although this is kind of like a serious topic as well. I think a lot of you will find it really interesting. But today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite group of pseudoscientists. And we're talking about flat earthers. Right, so I think flat earthers are, a, as as you mentioned, kind of like a funny group of people. Um, a group of people that like... I find myself uh, dunking on a lot, I guess, like kind of making fun of, um, um, and I don't know, like it's, it's just kind of an easy target because it seems like such a far out idea, mm-hmm. um, but we really want to give them, you know, the benefit of doubt with this episode. We really want to go into what they actually believe and some of the, um, the potential implications and just kind of like, what does this tell us about our society that this is an actual thing that people still believe? Um, so the first thing we wanted to talk about is how we know this might seem obvious but how we know the earth is in fact round or it's it's not flat um and also just kind of the history of believing the earth is flat um because i just think it's important to to give some context um so first of all if you guys weren't aware um you know pretty much everyone believed the the earth was flat very very long ago so like this was not always a known thing that the earth was a globe like we know now um and so in 350 bc in ancient greece this was the first time that anybody um, actually proposed that the world is a sphere. Um, and it was Aristotle himself who proposed this. And we don't know for sure if he was the first one, um, you know, because I think that sometimes things get like muddied in history. Because I, I just thought that was odd that like the very first person in all of history to propose this just happened to be an extremely famous philosopher you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um so so we don't really know absolutely but the like one account i could find was that as far back as 350 bc um was the first time anyone proposed that it was flat so oh you mean a sphere oh sorry that was a sphere that it was not flat yeah exactly um so next thing so like how do we even know the earth is round right um so like i said obviously for most of this it's kind of like well no shit like we don't we don't need an explanation like the earth is round we we've known that since we were a kid um but i think it's important to not discount flat earthers because it just sounds crazy that's not a good enough reason because there's actually a lot of valid reasons to Mm -hmm. discount what they believe in and i think it's a dangerous place to be where it's like oh well that sounds crazy i don't believe it because then there might be something that's true that you're like well that's not that sounds crazy i don't believe it you know what i mean so we need to know oh go ahead sorry Sorry, I was just gonna say, I absolutely agree, because I think it is important, like, I don't think we should discount something just because it sounds absolutely ridiculous. I think the process that we should go through is, again, like, a scientific method, you know, like, we test those theories and we test those beliefs, and that's how we should decide whether or not that idea or theory has any merit. Right, exactly. So it's it's not enough to just be like, oh, well, that sounds crazy, so they're wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, there's reasons that, there's, that they're wrong, um, that, you know, we have, like, testifiable like reasons and you know we have um evidence from thousands of years you know of of science so i'm going to kind of just get into that like some of the reasons we know just so you can have this in the back of your mind again i know it's obvious for a lot of us um but it's just a few reasons that we're using to discount this um cred or this this theory um so obviously the most like the, the i mean the most obvious um thing we could point to is pictures of earth that we have so when we sent people into space we have pictures of you know that they took of the earth and lo and behold it's a sphere um (laughs) but you know a lot of people will say you know when you get into the conspiracy theory mindset you'll kind of be quick to be like well that's not enough or that i don't believe that you know what i mean like it's it's never enough it's never um it can always be faked, you know? Right, so like some people, people will say, like, it, it's photoshopped or whatever. Oh, exactly. Yeah, people say it's, it's completely doctored. It's not real. So if that's not enough, we can look to many other sources. So for one of them, so like like I mentioned earlier with Aristotle, so this was over 2,000 years ago. Um, and he the reason he actually said that the Earth was round instead of flat was honestly pretty simple and pretty genius. So what he said was depending on your location on the earth you'll see a different set of stars at night right so like what we see here in southern california is obviously not going to be the same as what people see in china at night or in saudi arabia like they're going to see different sets of stars um and he his point was that if the earth was completely flat 
that wouldn't be the case because you would see the exact same set of stars no matter how far or uh, north or south you were. Because if you think about it, it's like, if it's just a disk, it doesn't matter where you are, we're all going to see the same thing. But when you go far enough north, you're going to see something different than if you were, you know, very far south. So that was just like a very simple point. Um, and then, of course, since then, in 2000 years since then, we've made many other discoveries um, that prove the Earth's roundness. Um, there's just too many to mention, but that I just wanted to kind of provide some of like the early history on it. Right, so those are the reasons that we, obviously, that we know that the Earth is round. Um, but basically, so like from there, like we pretty much have mentioned like what we believe, right? Like what the most of us in society believe and, and how we know the Earth is round. But I think it's important also to mention what flat earthers believe, because it might seem obvious. It's like, well, they believe the earth is flat, but it's actually more than that. So the next thing we want to go into is like, well, what do they believe that's different than what we believe? Right. And, you know, it's obvious for starters that they believe that the earth is a flat disk with the North Pole at the center and not at the top. And I've seen, actually, there's this documentary on Netflix. You should guys should definitely check it out. I think it's very interesting. It's called Behind the Curve. And it basically... Um, talks to people from both sides both you know like scientists and other individuals who believe that the earth is you know like a sphere and that it's round and then they also talk to others who believe that the earth is flat and i think from what i've seen they took us behind the scenes for like this convention of flat earthers and from what i've seen from there the most common model for them is the flat earth model and from what i've seen it is like like we mentioned before a flat disc and then there's this like half sphere that's on top that that's their model so it kind of is like a half sphere instead of like a like a globe and it basically they're saying that the earth is flat like we mentioned before and then there's this just like globe on top this like I don't know maybe like see-through globe whatever we see as like the sky if you've ever seen um what's that jim carrey movie uh oh the truman it's, show like, his life is a show. yeah yeah so it's kind of like the truman show i guess that's their idea is like there's yeah there's like a fake sun which i think is very interesting because i'd never really dive deeper into their beliefs or whatever you know it's interesting to see they have something similar to us where it's like a globe but it's their own version so i guess you know their thing is that there's this from the north pole that's where like the the moon and the sun kind of rotate i'm not sure exactly but it's very interesting you know to think like these people have like some very well developed theories in their mind like it, it's not like simple simple thought. oh yeah so i just think that's very interesting no yeah it's not just like oh it's it's a flat disc like they put time and effort into this and like yeah it's, it's funny like they think we basically it's kind of like a snow globe in a way like they like I don't know I'm sure there's there's even discussions within the flat earth community of like what exactly the flat earth looks like um I'm sure that I think there are a lot of discussion you know like not everyone agrees on the flat earth model different people have different theories so it is very interesting to see you know like there's not one um widely accepted theory yeah it's definitely a trip looking at their website too like it was really trippy for me to look at like like just the sheer amount of like information there is out there obviously it's not mm -hmm. real like it's misinformation but like they have archives and archives of like just so many articles so like volumes and um like they've just put so much thought into this over so many years and it's just crazy like it goes so much deeper than just like oh the earth is flat like it's th they put the work into this it's actually crazy Absolutely, yeah, and it surprised me. I, th I think, like, it wasn't until a couple years ago that I realized just how prevalent this um, Flat Earth Society was. Like, I'd always heard of it, and it was kind of like, you know, kind of like a joke on the back of your mind. You know, you didn't really think, like, oh, sure, a couple people believe that, whatever. But I was very surprised to learn, like, no, I, a significant amount of people do believe this, which is um, a little worrying, actually. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to get into that later. Like, what does that say about our, like, about the society today um, that we're regressing, kind of? You know right. what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think I thought the same thing. Like, I didn't think anyone actually believed that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, as a, like, a high schooler, I'm like, oh, well, surely that's just, like, a thing that people believed in, like, ancient times. Like, that's not a commonly accepted belief anymore. And it, it might not be commonly accepted, but it, you would be shocked at how many people actually buy into it. Because they just... I feel like they get the the seed planted in their head by someone Absolutely, and then yeah. like 
the more you go down the rabbit hole, like I didn't even want to spend a lot of time on the website because I didn't want to start being <laughs> like, oh, like they have a good point. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you just have to like, I don't know, like I obviously do your research and, and believe mm-hmm. what you will, but it's like you can believe anything if you if you just decide it's true. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's insane how many people really do stand by this. No, I agree. Absolutely. Like, um, like we mentioned before, a lot of this stuff we got from their actual website, because again, we want to see the way, like see things from their point of view. You know, we didn't want to just look at it from an outside perspective and say like, oh, these people are so wrong or they're so weird. You know, we actually do want to try to understand their way of thinking, because I think that is definitely important too. But yeah, like we mentioned, like their website is like very extensive and it, it's shocking to see, you know, like how well, um, how well thought out everything is maybe not properly of course like like we mentioned before it's like misinformation and mis science but to someone who does not know a lot about science like i understand how it could be very convincing absolutely yeah for sure it's it's and especially like i mean we'll get into it in a second but it's especially for people who like maybe are on the fringe of society or mm-hmm. who don't have that many people in their life to tell them like hey what you're believing in is is crazy and that this is why you know um it's it makes sense that people fall into it and they believe it especially if you have like a distrust of of authority or the Mm -hmm. government um yeah it it makes sense that a lot of people fall into this yeah absolutely and you know what others might not have considered however is that along with the rejection of the idea of like a round earth also comes the rejection of many other scientific theories that most people have accepted as fact and one of the biggest Um, theories out there is gravity and according to the official flat earth society website they believe that gravity does exist but to a greatly diminished degree than what we were commonly taught and this is important to their beliefs because gravity would pull the proposed flat disc into a globe that is 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 if it existed so i understand why again you know like we, we were saying before like this is kind of like misinformation and mis science there that the gravity um theory does not work for them so they have kind of changed it in their mind to make it work with their um flat earth theory and another thing they believe which is rather strange is that the earth has an ice barrier that surrounds the edges of the disc which keeps the oceans contained so imagine kind of like i believe from what i've seen is that they believe like this is antarctica you know which I understand, you know, like Antarctica is a mysterious place. Some people, many people have visited. So, you know, in their minds, you know, it's a very weird place. So Antarctica, they see it as it's like this ice barrier, like that's in a circle just surrounding the earth. And basically, you know, like that is the, they basically are saying like people, the government is hiding stuff from us and that everything is on the other side of the earth wall. And that's why like we can't see, you know. Yeah, and I think that this point is very interesting to me for several reasons. First of all, like like you said, they say like they basically this is Antarctica or whatever. But it's like like the simple reason for why not many people have gone to Antarctica is um, I don't know. It's cold as balls. Exactly. Like you would die if you try to live there. Like uh, it's pretty obvious why people don't go there. And it has been explored. It's just that people don't like live there, or as I, I don't think people like you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like obviously people aren't going to spend a lot of time there. Um, but yeah, I just think this idea is so insane that it's basically like, they think like our planet is like the lid of a jar, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's flat and then it just has that barrier around the edge that's ice and it's like, okay, okay, so that's what you believe. (laughs) Why haven't we ever seen it? That's true. It's like somehow, somehow I have the feeling that if they could conjure up a picture of this supposed ice wall they would believe it but they don't believe the pictures of the round earth you see what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. i feel like they can just kind of pick and choose i'm like so where are your pictures like you know you want to talk about pictures you know like where are your guys's pictures of of the ice wall or whatever it might be like i just don't understand and i think um another thing that i i thought of it's kind of neither here nor there but i thought it was so interesting is that if they believe the only thing containing our oceans is this barrier of ice i'm like then that it would make sense that flat earthers are definitely like anti-climate change Mm -hmm. or like they would care about that because in their minds it's like for all of us we're like okay if we lose the ice that's not a good thing like our climate is changing but for them it's like if we lose the ice our oceans are gone and like we're just gonna float off into space like that's gonna be really bad so i started thinking i'm like i wonder if there's like a big movement to like 
in climate change when flat earthers like that would kind of make sense but i I don't know i didn't investigate that that's a good point like i feel like when you go down these roads you kind of do fall down a rabbit hole and you never really know where that's gonna end up so i totally i it's very realistic to imagine that they it will lead them to other um pseudoscientific beliefs as well yeah exactly yeah and one more belief of theirs that we wanted to mention is actually concerning other planets which is very interesting because i actually hadn't um hadn't heard of their stance on other planets before that is actually something that i wanted to find out so oddly enough flat earthers believe that other planets are in fact round so they do believe that you know earth like there are other planets they are round they just don't believe that the earth itself is a planet and again referencing you know their website so this is straight from you know what they have said they claim that planets are orbiting astronomical objects and the earth is rather than an orbiting object a disk at the center of the solar system above which the planets and sun revolve so yes not only do they believe that the earth is flat and that it's not even a planet they believe that earth is at the center of the solar system too which again is another um theory that has been disproven a very long time ago from you know by galileo this is yeah again this is a theory that has just been disproved a very long time ago so it's very interesting to see that the two are kind of connecting in that fashion i almost feel like they're going back in time you know like they're going back to beliefs we had years ago before um you know modern science and whatnot yeah, I think that it is like a trip down memory lane. It's like a trip down uh, history, like in history mm-hmm. class, like reading about them, like that people still believe this. It, it trips me out. But yeah, I think that um, that part really, <laughs> I guess, concerned me or just took me like by surprise that they believe other planets are round. Because I was like, oh, well, surely they believe that all the other planets are flat mm-hmm. as well. But no, they believe all the planets are round except for Earth and that Earth isn't a planet. And I'm like, what about Pluto? Do you guys believe Pluto is a planet? Because, you know, that was ruled not to be a planet because it's too small. But is that is Pluto still a planet for you guys? Because, I mean, hell, if they still include planet, maybe I'll convert to flat earthers because I will miss Pluto being a planet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, poor Pluto. But, I mean, yeah, that is a very good point. You know, it's like, at, like, where does it stop? You know, that's the thing. It's like, so how far do you have to go like it's so funny this reminds me of this thing i saw on twitter once and it basically said that it was this person who was like oh so do you guys believe that mars is flat and then someone was like no no no, we totally believe mars is flat and then the person was like oh then why do you believe that And they're like we have seen pictures exactly (laughs) so so you believe the pictures of mars but you don't believe the pictures of earth i guess you know like again that is i feel like the um thought process of this is very interesting you know again it's very easy to go down these rabbit holes because it can be very confusing sometimes you know science is vast and complex and it's hard to accept so i understand you know why it is but it's just very interesting to see the way they think you know like where does it stop like what proof do you have to see before you believe it i guess is kind of my question right but i think that because of science like we have things like occam's razor Am I mm-hmm. saying it's Occam's razor, right? I know Occam's razor, saying. yes, which is yeah, the but... belief that the simple answer is mostly the right one. Yeah, exactly. Like the one that has less steps to it, that's probably the right one. Yeah, I agree. Like I like we mentioned before, you know, like you kind of have to adjust your thoughts. Like if you believe that the earth is flat, you kind of have to disagree with other scientifically accepted facts because they do not, you know, they obviously do not support this one theory, but the thing with um I think flat earthers as well is that they take this one piece of science and they run with it in the totally other direction and no matter what amount of proof you give them i feel like it just they don't pay attention to that proof you know like confirmation bias is like they believe this and instead of trying to find a bunch of um evidence to support the fact that it leads to this theory they go from this theory and they kind of work backwards to only accept the pieces of evidence that work to support their theory you know so they're only picking and choosing what they believe works for them which is right and I I think we all do that to some extent but with them I just think it's so glaring and it's so like because like I said like we all will reject certain things especially with like people we know or people we look up to you know we'll all I think we're all guilty of being like oh well that wasn't a big deal that they did this um just because we have a bias to like them you know what I mean or or Mm -hmm. whatever it might be um 
but I think that with them, it's like the the things that they're saying that they're rejecting are just so <laughs> bizarre and so like like it's just funny to me because it's like we can't even agree on that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like okay, we can disagree on some things, but it's like the Earth is round. Like that's just like we can't even agree on that. You know what I mean? So I think it's just um, it's just easy for us to be to to kind of judge them for that and to not understand how they believe it. But you're right that with confirmation bias, you can just you know kind of backtrack and and put the pieces together and just believe whatever you really want to. Absolutely, and I think you know you kind of can do that for anything, which is again, it's a very slippery slope to go down. And yeah. something I want to mention, which I just thought was really funny to me, is that do you know the rapper Bob? He was pretty popular back yes. in the early two thousands. <laughs> so I guess he's a flat earther too, and he's actually trying to raise money to build a rocket to fly into space to get proof that the Earth is flat. You know what I'm saying? And it's just funny to me. It's like we have pictures, like we have pictures. We've sent rockets out into Earth, like. It's just, like, even if you do go yourself, like, if you bring back proof to your all your other Flat Earther friends, like, are they even going to believe it? Do you know what I mean? That is so true. You know what would be funny? If, if Elon Musk, like, funded it. <laughs> and he was like, okay, I'll, I'll send you off in, like, a SpaceX thing or something. And, like, B.O.B. could see for... Because I know he's, like, adamant about it. He's, like, on the forefront just because he's pretty famous. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, like, out there really saying that, <laughs> that the Earth is flat and, like, speaking that to the masses... And I just think it's funny that, yeah, like, what what would be the outcome if he gets up there and he sees the Earth as round? Or he sends someone up there for the project and they take pictures and it's round. I feel like in that case he would be like, oh, you guys are snakes. Exactly. Like you, you, you know what I mean? Like, he would turn against them. But if he saw it himself, I feel like the community would turn against him. Absolutely. You know, they would say, like, you're, you're a snake or you were bought off or something. So it's just kind of... Um, becomes like a witch hunt, kind of. It's just not a... It's not a good path to go down. Absolutely. Like, it's... I feel like, you know, like, it's like, again, that thing, if it, if it doesn't fit into what I believe, then I don't believe at all. In this case, seeing really is not believing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I think it's also very important to go into why they believe this, you know, because there's definitely a lot of um, psychology behind it and why they choose to believe these things. And now that we have a better grasp on what they actually believe, we want to explore, you know, the psychological side. And sure, if you ask them, like, why they're a flat earther, most of them would probably say something like that they're being fed lies by the government and the media their whole life, and this is them, like, finding the truth. But, you know, I think there's more to that. You know, there. I think there's definitely something that makes someone more susceptible to believing in a flat Earth. And, like, unlike some of the critics of the Flat Earth Society, we don't believe that flat earthers are, are just plain crazy or stupid. You know, I've seen videos of this and like I said definitely go watch the behind the curve documentary because you actually get to see these people in action and many of these people are qualified talented and intelligent people you know they buy into this belief they're like everyday people they're not crackpot well yeah exactly (laughs) some are but some of them yeah some of them for sure (laughs) the majority of them you know are everyday people just like you and me like I said before like it was shocking to me the amount of people who believe this but you know like Aside from that, I mean, going into this um, episode, like we mentioned before, like, we were very impressed by their website and, you know, like, graphic design skills, the way it was written out. Like, it's impressive. It looks very real and official, you know? So, again, it's very easy to to go look into this and say, wow, yeah, this is all very well researched. This is very well thought out. Of course, I'm going to believe this, you know? But, you know, whoever they have working on there, obviously they have some skills. They have the intelligence to do this, you know? And not to mention, this is very serious dedication to their beliefs, you know? And I don't know if they're like being paid or if this is like an actual job or whatever, like the people who work on their website or if they're just truly that dedicated to it like we don't know but the thing is you know again we're not saying all these people like we don't want to criticize them off the bat and say like that they are completely dumb or they don't know what they're talking about because I you know I truly think like we said that these are people just like you and me who maybe have had some sort of like mistrust in society or something like that they're definitely undergoing like there's definitely underlying psychological reasons for this, I believe, that makes them more susceptible to believing in this type of stuff. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, I think it's important to give them, uh, not credit in what they believe, but give them credit where credit is due, like we said, with, like, the website's really good, and some of them are 
very dedicated to this. They've put on like conferences, like definitely watch Behind the Curve because I remember they have like a whole conference there and they they have like, they hold all these different experiments or conduct all these different experiments. Like they really do put a lot of time and effort into it. And like, there's some clever people that believe this, but I think that's what makes it all the more interesting to us is that like, okay, so there's, we know that not all of them are just like, like unintelligent because honestly to even like, grapple with these ideas you have to be like it's not a it's not an intelligence issue it's an ignorance issue you know what Absolutely, i mean yeah. so like for them to grapple with these abstract ideas they have to be like like somewhat intelligent you know what i mean so it's not that they're just stupid and so and i think that's what's so interesting to me is that like so they have some really smart people over there or like that believe this idea so why would they believe a bogus idea like this? Because if you think about smart people, generally they're not going to believe something that seems so obvious to not be, or to to not be the case. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that like where, like that's where the psychology comes in. Um, And I think the, honestly, I really do think the answer is that like, we all have a, like a desire to fit in and we all need to feel, you know, um, not all of us, but pretty much most people have a desire to fit in and to feel you know, accepted and affirmed in what in what they believe and who they are. Like, they just want to fit in somewhere. And I mean, like, even with you and I, Dom, like, we believe a lot of the same things and we just get along really well. And it's great because it's like, when we talk, it's like, okay, somebody understands me. You know what I mean? But like, not, right. not all people have that. Not all people have someone who gets them or, you know, who they can relate to. Some people are very outcast. And this could be for you know, so many different reasons. They might have been bullied, they might have been abused, they might have been neglected or rejected, or there's so many different things that could lead to this um, kind of, you know, mindset or somebody feeling this way. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people who are, they feel rejected by society or by somebody and um, they're just in a vulnerable place. And I think this is that, like that vulnerable person who feels rejected and feels like they don't fit in anywhere is the perfect mm-hmm. victim to fall or per, the perfect person to fall victim to to a cult or to some something like this like believing in the flat earth or to any like extreme mm-hmm. measures just so they can feel that sense of belonging and i think that one group that came to my mind when i was thinking about this is like the kkk and i know that's obviously like an extreme like terrorist group um but or it should be considered yeah it's, it's technically not a, considered a terrorist group there's a petition. Please sign the petition. But side note, uh, to make the KKK be considered a terrorist group, but that's uh, neither here nor there. But uh, like, obviously, they're just like racist assholes. But other than that, I feel like there's more than that with the KKK. For example, just using this as an example, like they feel this like brotherhood. They feel this like sense of of belonging and like that they somebody mm-hmm. gets them. And they're obviously the fringe of society because most people know that like. KKK is like they're assholes and they're terrorists but you know they they're okay with being that person because they have this sense of belonging so I think that like if if someone can can be a part of that extreme of a group and that far on like the fringe of society that they're considered terrorist and they're considered monsters by most people in society then of course people will fall into to flat earth beliefs you know what i mean that are not that mm-hmm. like you know we, we might think that the flat earth belief is extreme but then you look at the beliefs of kkk members and it's like well that's way more extreme on for a different reason you know what i mean so mm-hmm. i think that um yeah so it, it just kind of makes sense that like if, you know when we feel the need to belong so badly that we will turn to these insane measures and and people end up in cults and people end up doing just things that most of society would be like what the hell are you doing like that's obviously a bad idea that's right, obviously yeah. not true that's obviously bad what you're believing or what you're doing but we just want to feel belonging i mean that's how gangs work even mm-hmm. if you look at it like it's really just like that sense of family and like you belong somewhere you know and i really do think that's what's at um, at the core of any of these, like, crazy beliefs, th- th- like, we might consider them crazy, I really do think it's the sense of belonging that comes with it. Yeah, I agree as well, you know, like, it's a very, it's very ingrained in us to be accepted, you know, like, society-wise, you know, it's very important to belong to a certain group and to feel accepted, so I think this is definitely a way for them to have that. Yeah, for sure, and Another thing I thought of um, when I was researching for this episode was in-group bias. So 
I probably mentioned this before. I always make the joke, oh, I was a psychology major um, <laughs> because I'm like analyzing everything. But, you know, as what I learned from, from psychology through, um, or one thing I learned from psychology through college is about in-group bias. That was something that was brought up over and over and over. And basically, if you haven't heard of it before, the tenets of in-group bias are that we just prefer members of our in-group, whether it is like real or imagined, rather than members of our out-group. So even when it's like, you're literally like it, we, it's been shown that like if you're in an experiment and like if like you and I were in the experiment and I got paired into or I, like they were randomly selecting us into groups and I was put into the group that you know wore red shirts and you were put into the group that wore blue shirts literally random has nothing to do with who we are what race we are what gender we are nothing just completely random I would still prefer the members who like the people who are wearing the red shirt more than you just because of that like it's just this random thing that like it doesn't even have any bearing on our personalities um so this that's like the idea of in-group bias is that that's how deep our sense of, of of needing to belong somewhere goes is that even just like a random arbitrary group that you're put in that means absolutely nothing to you you'll still prefer those people more than people who are the out group or like quote unquote out group which they're really not you know what i mean they're just like from that experiment it's like they're just wearing a different color than you Mm -hmm. um so when you think about that i think it becomes much more obvious that when you when you believe something that's kind of like um you know especially when it's something that's like secretive or it's um it's rejected by society or it's some kind of like ultimate knowledge that most people don't have and you you know you meet other people who believe that same thing of course you're gonna feel this like very strong sense of of in-group bias and you're gonna feel this strong sense of connection to them because it's like yes we're in this together like we understand each other nobody else gets it you know what i mean and in a way it's kind of like a frater sorority where it's like this group of people and you have like maybe a few things in common like it it, it it's just like a group you all belong to um mm -hmm. but you know frats and sororities don't tend to believe things like this um but it's just kind of like a similar mindset of like this is my new family and these are people who understand me and especially if you think about it once you get deep enough into especially like cults but i wouldn't consider a flat earth a cult but like once you get deep enough into it like any kind of fringe belief you are gonna start losing friends and you might even start losing family members in terms of like they, they might just stop talking to you because they're like, you're crazy, you're batshit crazy, I don't want to talk to you because all you want to mm -hmm. talk about is how the government's lying to me and I'm, I'm sick of it. Or maybe they're just like, you're like, you know, I don't want to be around you because you're harmful, you know what I mean? The things you believe right. are, um, are wrong and you're going to start losing people in your life and that will make you even more isolated and it'll make you cling on to that group that you have even more because I think, I feel like it could get to a point where it's like, maybe you don't even believe it that much anymore but like mm -hmm. if you choose not to believe it anymore you have no one left so it makes sense that people end up so ingrained in these groups um and just so because i mean it's easy as an outsider to be like how do people end up in cults how do people end up believing the earth is flat like just don't do that you know what i mean it's so easy to be like well don't do that but we don't know what their circumstances are we don't know if we could fall into that because spoiler <laughs> spoiler alert any of us could fall into it if we were under um, certain circumstances. So I just think it's important to remember that, um, you know, anyone could fall prey to that. And, and just because we haven't been in the, the circumstances and the unfortunate place in life to fall into it doesn't mean we're any better than them. And I think that's something, um, yeah, just to keep in mind, to have empathy. Absolutely. And, you know, like you mentioned before, there's kind of like the whole uh, feeling of acceptance within this group. And again, that kind of plays into mob mentality, like we mentioned before. And mob mentality is kind of like, again, like where a whole group of people who believe one thing all kind of join together. And the thing is, they kind of like feed off each other, you know, like they kind of again, like those are the only types of beliefs that you're hearing every single day. And like we mentioned, if you are cut off from like your other friends or family, again, these are the only people you have to rely on. And I feel like that kind of feeds the belief even more, like you mentioned, because these are the only views that they're hearing, they are not hearing anything else. And of course, that will obviously have an effect on them. And I feel like this, we'll touch on more of this later, but I feel like it can be kind of dangerous to ostracize someone like this because, again, you are pushing them away from you. You are pushing them towards this um, group that does believe something that is not highly accepted. So like we said, 
a fringe group, it definitely hurts them, I feel like, to kind of, like, not see their point of view. Like, I totally understand why, you know, you feel the need to push them away, but I feel like that's dangerous. I feel like you are affecting the person they feel left out they feel like no one understands them except for this one particular group and if that is all you hear those are the only people you interact with of course what else are you going to believe you know and this is like confirmation bias the whole group again if you believe this one thing that flat earth you know if there is a flat earth you kind of tend to just put everything aside that that kind of goes against your beliefs and that's the whole thing as a group that they kind of tend to do they are so like we mentioned they um did experiments and stuff like that and we'll get into more of that later but it's like obviously if you're conducting experiments you would think that the results will lead you to a the right answer obviously which is like the earth is round like we said even when they conduct these experiments they are twisting the results to suit their beliefs and their needs so that can be a very dangerous thing i feel like that's something we should touch on too is that it i don't think it's very right to ostracize these types of people because i think that does a lot more damage in the long run as well yeah for sure because i think that like any time you're isolated with either a group of people or with just one person like you're gonna at some point it's kind of like the if you can't beat them join them complex where it's like mm -hmm. you're gonna start believing them if you hear them all the time so if you're just living in an echo chamber where everything is flat earth you know and i i think one thing to consider too is that you kind of touched on this earlier that like believing the, the earth is flat it seems like that's that's not really like a personality trait it seems like it's just you know something that you believe but just like so many other things, it becomes people's personality. It becomes a yeah. huge part of their identity to where if they gave up their belief in the, the flat earth, it wouldn't just be like, oh, okay, well now I believe the earth is round and nothing else is different. Mm -hmm. It's like that was their identity. That It's like giving up a religion or giving up, um, like for me, if I just like stop being vegan, it would be a huge personality shift. Like that's a really big part of my identity, you know? So right. I think that um, it's kind of like that for them where like it becomes such a deep part of their identity that they just can't give it up it's just like they they need it almost and yeah i think you're definitely right that like when you ostracize them even though it might be easy to want to ostracize them because it's annoying when they're just like saying stupid things like that you know like it's it's easy to be like because i'm sure there's people listening to this who know people who, right. who believe in the flat earth and i'm sure it's easy to be like well that's stupid like you're dumb like why do you believe that but when you ostracize them yeah for sure i think it it makes them more susceptible to like honestly to just fall even deeper down the exactly, rabbit hole and believe yeah. it even more yeah but i you know like moving on from you know harmful to the flat earthers themselves we should actually look at you know are they actually harmful to others and to society itself let's get serious for a minute let's it's hard not to poke fun at this group because again it just seems so out of the realm of the norm for us but there are you know real life implications to their belief we you know we tend to believe Alon and I that pseudoscience is always harmful as it always you know as it encourages the rejection of actual scientific method that has advanced our society so much and you know when we start rejecting the basic facts of the universe like gravity the shape of the world etc we kind of open the floodgates to believe all kinds of like untrue claims like i said it's very easy to go down a rabbit hole from this one thing to another thing and we can't back this up with proof but we definitely think that flat earthers give way to other untrue beliefs like you know like vaccines don't work or that they cause autism and that climate change isn't real other stuff like that you know like practical scientific stuff that people should know as like everyday facts of the world and you know basically just a, a bunch of other false ideas that have real world consequences yeah i think for sure like like you said we can't really like prove that to be the case that there's like this you know i wish i had a venn diagram of like all the crazy shit people believe and then see where mm -hmm. how much is is overlap you know what i mean because i really do believe that like once you reject like a basic basic fact about the universe or i mean we can't really call it i guess we can't call anything fact but like gravity is as close to a fact as we can possibly get you know um like once you reject mm -hmm. something so basic like like gravity or the earth being round yeah, I really do believe that you're you're gonna be more open to believing other crazy things. And even like I was saying with uh, being vegan, 
I definitely consider myself like, um, I don't know how to say this, like a normal person, but I'm vegan. Like, you know what I mean? Because, well, because the thing is, the reason I say that is because there's vegans who are like insane. You know what I mean? There's people who are, it's mm. like, it's not just a part of- Like very extreme. Yeah, it's not just a part of their identity. It's like the only part of their identity. That's all they are is vegan. And they believe like, because once you get into it, it's like, yeah, there's a lot that like you're not told or you don't realize about like factory farming and everything. But then once you get into that, like people see it as like, oh, we're being lied to. And then they take it to like a conspiracy level, like a conspiracy theory level where it gets to um, like a vaccine thing. Like I actually, like I know for a fact, there's a lot, unfortunately, there's a lot of vegans that are also anti-vax. Like there's that, that, that is one group that overlaps a lot. And that disappoints me because as a vegan, I'm very pro-science and I'm very, um, you know, in favor of, I, I, I mean, I, I don't like pseudoscience. I don't like charlatanism. Um, I don't believe in essential oils, uh, you know, as a replacement for medicine or anything like that. I don't believe that vaccines cause autism, but a lot of vegans do. You know, there's people who go down that rabbit hole, especially like raw mm -hmm. veganism. And again, there's raw vegans who are perfectly normal, like, like science like believe in science people but there's especially raw veganism they'll believe that you know like essential oils are all you need to survive you don't actually need medicine ever and you know that um vaccines cause autism and that nobody should have vaccines and it's like no 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 the, like what you believe with the veganism at, at first was okay <laughs> but then you got so deep into it that you just started just you like you said like you just open the floodgates and you just started believing all these crazy things so i think the same thing can happen with any like fringe belief like the earth being I agree, flat yeah. i don't think being vegan is a fringe belief but i think some people take it to their um but being a flat earther definitely is like on the fringe of society and um once you open yourself up to that you don't know where it's going to take you and i don't mean that in a good yeah way. like we mentioned definite rabbit hole there like it makes sense you know again it's if you suddenly start believing this one belief it's like oh well what else that have i believed my entire life that's wrong you know, is very can be very dangerous and you know, I think it's easy to think that flat earthers are kind of like funny to just to think about and that they don't really have direct consequences on our society, but I actually disagree because it's a growing number of people who continue believing this and it's like these people will have children and they'll t teach these children their beliefs and it's like we're gonna have a whole generation grow up that believes in this pseudoscience, these claims that the earth is flat and I... I mean, I don't even know how you start even combating that as like, if you're a teacher, if you suddenly have a child that says the earth is flat, like, and that's what my parents think, how on earth are you going to convince them that that is wrong? Yeah, how are you going to tell them? That's like telling a kid your religion is shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't tell someone, oh, well, what your parents told you is wrong and your parents are stupid. Like, what what are you going to tell them that they're going to believe you over their parents? Like, that's so true that, like, it could potentially be a whole generation of kids telling other kids and like not listening to anyone else of course it's it's not going to be like you know i don't think it'll make it to the mainstream to where the majority of people believe it but i it is a growing problem like we have to acknowledge that that this is a growing phenomenon that more and more people are believing these uh pseudoscientific claims exactly and i feel like we have to address this because again if we don't address this and we don't take it seriously more people are just going to keep believing this pseudoscience and this misinformation. Anti-vaxxers, for example, have had the have the potential to bring back diseases that have been long since eradicated in the US, like measles. And climate deniers make it harder to improve the state of the planet because they don't even accept that climate change is a real thing. And you know, there's other plenty conspiracies that have serious social and physical consequences like Holocaust deniers and obviously right now people who don't believe that COVID-19 is actually a thing. They don't even believe that it exists, which I, again, I don't, I don't even know how you get to that point, but I'm, I'm not touching on that. Right, that's kind of like what I was saying with like the flat earth. It's like, how do, like, we don't even agree on that. We don't even right. agree on the most basic, like simple, obvious thing. Like it's, it's just, it's all bad guys. <laughs> Exactly. And like we mentioned before, like these people, they are not um, unintelligent people. They do perform experiments. And one video that I've seen, um, this guy, I guess, he, he was not a flat earth believer, but he had seen a flat earther do this experiment. And he was kind of like, 
trying to debunk it or kind of explain why it doesn't exist. So basically, he took like this little level on a plane and basically, you know, a level is supposed to tell you when everything is like even. And so I guess this flat earther, he took a level on a plane and he said, if the plane is really round, it will not stay level like you'll see it move but the entire time the level stayed you know perfectly normal and he was like this is proof that the earth is flat because if we were really going over a curve like if the earth was rounded and curved the level would have moved and that was his proof you know that the earth was flat and obviously this is um flawed. this is a very <laughs> flawed experiment like i said this is very um it's was not done correctly it's pseudoscience it was just a mis mis experiment stupid yes. stupid to say the least <laughs> yes let's just say it had no basis in science that whole experiment um, yes but this is the kind of stuff that we see we see people take stuff like this which they believe is a scientific method to prove uh, you know the existence or lack of you know the curve of the earth and they believe that the results of their experiment truly prove that but the thing is like we mentioned they are twisting science and they are doing experiments that don't necessarily have like any basis in scientific method and another thing that i saw too was that um in the behind the curve documentary that we watched there's this guy who is using what engineers use like a laser or something to point out like the distance from I don't even know how to explain it. I'm not an engineer or anything like this. I don't know how this stuff No, works. I know exactly what you're talking about. I was going to bring this up. Like, when they were at the lake, yes, right? Yes, when they were at the lake. And basically... Yeah, I don't remember what it was. But, yeah, it was, it was going to show that <laughs> the Earth is flat. Right. Like, the whole aim of this experiment was to show that the Earth is flat. However, when he finished the experiment, he did not get the result that he wanted. And his all his reaction was, that's interesting. We, we must have done it wrong. But the fact of the matter is, no, you did not do it wrong. You did it exactly right, and you got the results. However, you just don't believe the results because they are denying what you believe. And again, this is a very dangerous because this is not how science is supposed to work. Exactly. And science is like, I think the, the term is self, is it self-adjusting? Or it's, I forgot what the term is. There's like a term to explain this exact thing. But like, this is the beautiful thing about science is that like, this also goes back to the professor I had that he was saying, like, he would always mention this this account of, like, there was a mathematician once who had some theory, and he had had, like, he had, you know, worked on it for a long time, and nobody had ever really, like, challenged it, or it was pretty much, you know, just, like, accepted as fact. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, 15 years of him having that theory. And one day, I guess he was teaching a class, and, like, that, that theory came up, and one of his students or somebody, it might have been um, a fellow professor, I'm not sure who it was, but somebody, you know, explained why it's wrong. Like he explained like, no, this is actually, you know, wrong, which I know it's like hard to think about math being wrong because it's <laughs> like, I don't it's even math. know how that works. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how theoretical math works, but whatever. Um, but yeah, he basically proved it wrong. And if it was a flat earther or somebody who believes something like this, they would be like, no, 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 you're wrong here. Let me explain why you're wrong and just like go off and make up excuses. But this man who had put 15 years of his life into this theory shook the guy's hand and he was like, thank you so much. And that's the beautiful thing about science is that he was so grateful because he's like, this wasn't right. And I was spreading this information and now I know. And it's probably was like a, a minute thing. You know what I mean? But um now he's like, we're one step closer to the truth, and we're one step closer to using the right, um, whatever it might have been. I don't, I don't know how uh, math works, <laughs> to be honest. Right. don't know how that kind of stuff works. But he was so grateful is the point. He was so thankful that this man proved him wrong. And nowhere would you find that other than, than science, you know, because science is really just about getting one step closer to the truth as, you know, like just step by step. Mm -hmm. um, but with pseudoscience, it's not about that. It's because the funny thing is with pseudoscience, they believe they've already arrived at the truth because exactly. for science, it's kind of like that, that old quote that like, it's not about the destination, it's the journey. So like we're on our, our way to the truth, but we don't know when we have the absolute truth because it's ever changing because, Absolutely, you know, yeah. um, we might've thought that the earth was perfectly round before, but now we know it's, I think it's a bleat oblate spheroid something like that so we know a little bit more of the truth we know it's a little we are a little bit closer to being perfectly accurate you know what i mean um but we know that we might never arrive at the absolute 100 percent truth but we're getting right. there but with pseudoscience it's like oh we've already arrived at the absolute truth way before we did any experiments and now we're just backtracking to make sure it all lines up and that's just not science that's not how science exactly. works. exactly 
like they're picking and choosing what works for them and that that's just not it you know you ha- with science you have to take both things like if you get a result that you know, that goes against your hypothesis, then you test it again, and then you arrive at another hypothesis, or you realize that your hypothesis was wrong, you know, like, that's the whole point, is that it's a method, it's a series of tests and experiments to kind of check whether the information is right, you know, and these, this is the exact opposite of that. Yeah, for sure, and so I think that's just important to think about, like, the implications and the harms that come from pseudoscience, because it's really just it's um it has the potential to destroy everything we've built with science so we need to keep that in mind that like this is although it's like we mentioned it's it's easy to goof on them it's easy to dunk on them because they're they're a, a, an easy target um it is important to remember that it has serious effects as well and in you know like going along with that kind of looking at the bigger picture we wanted to kind of end with like the take-home message of basically why are more people believing in the flat earth phenomenon? Like, why are more people believing the earth is flat? Um, and basically, like, what does this say about our society? Like I was saying earlier. And I watched a video once from, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson was being interviewed, and they mentioned the flat earth. That's kind of, like, what they were talking about. And Neil deGrasse Tyson is a huge, like, inspiration to me. He's, like, one of my heroes. I have a ton of his books um, sitting right next to me, actually. And yeah, so I wanted to mention something that he said, because if you don't know, he's um, like a renowned astrophysicist. Um, He's a very, obviously very intelligent person. Um, And he gave like more of a, instead of like a scientific take on it, he gave more of a, like a philosophical take, I guess. And he mentioned that basically like, what does this say about our society? Well, it says that our education system is failing us. It's failing our children. Um, because how can this many people really believe something that's that's so obvious, you know? And I would have never really even thought of that, you know what I mean? Because I think of this as like a, as, you know, more of like a thing that you come across as an adult, I guess. I don't know why, just that, because that, I mean, I guess the people that we see who are flat earthers are already adults. So I don't really think of it as in terms of the school system. Um, mm-hmm. But when he said that, it really made me think, I was like, damn, like we, you know, we are failing our kids if, if this many people still believe this. Um, and I think one thing I want to mention also is that although it might appear that there's more and more um, flat earthers, the, the numbers might not be going up, as, or it might, and at least not as much as it might seem. It might just be that now they have the platform of the internet and different, you know, like social media sites within the internet. Um, mm-hmm. So they're more v- visible, you know what I mean? So we can see them and we can like believe and see, look at their website and see what they believe. Um, that might be part of it too, but um, it does seem that they are increasing in numbers. And yeah, I thought that was really interesting that um, Neil Grass Tyson said, you know, like that means, wait, that, that kind of means where our, our education system needs reform. I mean, it, it definitely does, but I think that's uh, one indicator of that. Right. And like you mentioned, you know, with the with the increase of like the internet and like pages that they have all over like websites and stuff like that, it, it can be very dangerous because, again, they are spreading misinformation. If someone just stumbles across this, you know, without knowing any better, it is very easy to fall into this belief, especially if you like see all these posts and all these people talking about it. It is definitely spreading misinformation. Yeah, I mean, I think that like other than like I was saying like other than just like that like people having social media and they're just being like more visibility towards them um I think that unfortunately like uh, going along with what I was saying about the internet um it's not just that they're more visible I think that the fact that they have like forums and websites and Facebook accounts and, and Instagram accounts dedicated to this I think gives them the ability to recruit yeah and so I think that like definitely flat earth can recruit through social media so i think it's um it's a world it's you know it's a different world we're living in and i think that falling into a cult falling into um these kind of beliefs or like i mentioned more sinister like isis or the kkk um i think it's actually a lot easier now because we have social media um and i think that they kind of use that as a tool to i I don't know if it's like recruit people because again this isn't a cult so I, i don't think it's like really um even in their favor to have a lot of people like it, it, it I don't yeah I mean I think they definitely want to they want other people to believe it because again that's what they believe and they're trying to spread what they believe is true they want others to believe it as well so I think not so much like recruitment but they definitely want others to 
listen to them, you know, and to see their points of view. And again, other people can definitely be vulnerable to that and say, oh, well, you have a good point. I, I see the way you're thinking, which is not that good. Right. And so, yeah, I guess it's not really like, because I don't want to say they're recruiting people like in a predatory sense. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's more so like, they're like you're saying they want to spread the their truth in their mind the truth right because it's like if you believe something that you that like is is rejected by society you you would want to spread that as well Mm -hmm. you would want to tell people you would want people um to know the truth as well so i think it's i don't think it's coming from a sinister place i really don't think that they're trying to like recruit people in their little scheme like i don't even know what the scheme would be you know what i mean like it's really just that they believe that the earth is flat um, but I do think that in, the internet can be, um, you know, use, used in that way, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I think that just all kind of plays into why there's more of them now. Um, and going forward, I honestly, I don't really know. I don't know how we can really combat this other than being calm and being um, giving them the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. and being kind, you know, if you do come across people with these beliefs. Because they're probably very defensive. I could imagine they'd be very defensive and oh, very yeah, quick to, um, to defend their views. Like, yeah, to defend themselves and to go off because they probably get dunked on so often. They probably get made fun of so often and people calling them stupid and just like all kinds of awful things. Um, so I think that it's important if you ever do come in contact with someone like this, um, whether it's over the internet or in real life or if they're your family member or something like that, I think it's important to really hear them out and let them actually speak their piece rather than being like, you're stupid, I'm not going to hear anything you say. Like, I think it's important to let them speak their piece and let them, you know, feel comfortable and feel like you're not there to judge them and be kind. Um, But, you know, explain, maybe like, explain why it's wrong and give them reasons as to to why it's wrong. And I think it's also important um, to level with people and be like, you know what, like, I don't really trust the government either. Like, because if I'm being real, like, I do not trust the government Mm -hmm. as far as I can throw them. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, of course, I don't um, just, like, trust the government. I have a a deep suspicion of of the government and of a lot of authority figures. But I also monitor myself so I don't fall into these crazy beliefs. So I think it's, it's good to level with people and be like, you know what? I don't trust the government either, but you don't have to believe the earth is flat just because you don't trust the government. Right, like, sometimes yeah. they're not lying about everything. You know, like, they might be lying about certain things. Guaranteed, they're lying about certain things. The earth being round, I, I don't think that's one of them. I don't. I really don't <laughs> think so. I don't think so either. Again, only because what would be the benefit? Like, what would be the point, I guess, yeah. to have I, That's what I don't believe get. that it's round rather than flat. Yeah, I'm glad we we arrived at that because I totally <laughs> forgot this point that like that's the that's the main thing that comes to my mind when I research about this. I'm like, okay, so they believe the government is hiding this from right, us. Right, like why? Why? Like I understand when people say that we fake the moon landing because if we were in a space race, right? right? Like right. we were trying to get to space before Russia. So there's like a reason. What's the reason that the the like just to hold it above our heads so just so they can chuckle, you know, at the fire with their cigars and say, "Oh, they really think the earth is round." Like <laughs> like why? Like why would they why would they do that? But, you know, I think it's I just think it's important to um, you know, to to get let them speak their piece, mm-hmm. hear them out, um, and you know, meet people with kindness and meet people with um, you know, level with them because I I hope that these conversations can happen going forward right, because right. if if the you know the ninety five percent of us or whatever that believe the Earth is round stick to ourselves and the fringe you know the five percent or whatever it might be that believe the Earth is flat sticks to themselves we're never going to get anywhere and mm-hmm. they're just going to probably grow in numbers and that's not good for our society so I think it's important to to you know integrate and to talk to these people and to have these conversations um because you know i think a lot of it like i said is is being defensive and right, feeling like yes. you're on the fringe and feeling like no one gets you so if you're just kind to these people i feel like a lot like a lot of progress could happen so yeah that's that's how i feel about it i feel like they're ignorant not stupid and uh we you know we need to be kind to them i guess even though they might believe um crazy things we can do our best to just you know Try to try to prevent the spread of pseudoscience with kindness. Absolutely. I think that's the thing is that most people, um, again, like when they do believe, they do have like fringe beliefs like this, they are quite defensive, they are quite closed down. And I think the most important thing for us to do is to have an open and respectful discourse about 
these certain beliefs. And I think that is the only way to really make progress in that sense is to kind of just have respect for each other. Again, be kind, and just be open to talk about things like this. But yeah. But anyway, that is the end of this episode. We will be back with a new episode on Monday. And if you guys want to reach out to us or give us some feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Our Instagram is at Dark Matter Pod and our Twitter is Dark Matter underscore pod. And if you want to check out any of our resources for this um, episode or even just check out the documentary, we'll have sources on our website, darkmatterpod.com. Right. And if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave a review and follow us. Um, you can also listen to us on Spotify or on YouTube where we upload our episodes weekly. Um, and be, be sure to spread the word if you did enjoy this episode or any other episodes, um, you know, to your friends and family, because that's the best way for us to gain more of you guys. And we really do appreciate it. All right. Thanks for listening.